Welcome to the Soul Infused Holidays. Today is day number five, and I'm super excited that you're here. And I want to wait a few moments or a minute because it always takes some time for people to jump in. So if you are on the replay and you're seeing this already, leave a comment below, say hello, and please also share with me, where are you watching from? Where in the world are you? Say hello, leave a comment below. I'm always really curious to hear because I have people from all over the world. So I'm gonna take a few moments and then we get started. And as we are waiting for people to jump in, invite someone, invite a friend, share this with someone else that you would love to know about this as well. Yes, and I get already a few hearts here and a few likes. Click the love and like button if you see and hear me and if you're here. Hi, Tina is here from Denmark, fantastic, love it. Leah is here from Indonesia, Jakarta, that's commitment. Darlene is here, hello. Yeah, let's see. pop in, yeah, from Indonesia, I know, fantastic. Okay, hello on Instagram. And again, I know um, I'm waiting for a few moments, but at the end of the day, is the, I know it takes a little bit for people to join live, and I want them to get the most out of it, so I don't mind to wait like a few more seconds. And while we're waiting, and if you are new to my show, my name is Sonia Bueno de la Torre, and I'm very excited and passionate about helping you to go smoothly through the holidays and through life. This is not only for the holidays, but, and today it's about self-care and what that actually means. And I'm sure you hear about self-care, it's all over everywhere, self-care, self-care here, self-care there. And, but what does that actually mean? How do you do it? What's stopping you? And what's the most important piece to actually do it on a consistent basis? And why is it important for you? What's the benefit for you? So all of that we're gonna explore today and for you to get the most out of this is tune in for a moment and check in with yourself what the self-care means to me like what does self-care mean to you simply just check in what does self-care mean to you and share it with us leave a comment below and also ask questions i'm always surprised that you know people come up to me all the time and ask me all sorts of questions and when i'm here live and i tell them to ask me a question i would help them they don't ask me anything <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to ask questions, use it, it's your opportunity. Okay, so let me get started. So I'm, I want to start with a question and this is not like a, it's a serious question. When was the last time, if at all, that you said to yourself, I love you? And I don't mean in the way of, you know, this esoteric or spiritual way, it's like, well, I'm going to stand in front of my mirror and I'm gonna say, I love you, and look at it. That's a great exercise, but that's not what I mean. When was the last time, if at all, when you were just in your daily life and you did and said something or you experienced something and you genuinely said to yourself, man, I love you? Take a moment and be honest. When was the last time? that you genuinely said that to yourself. And I'm curious to hear. And maybe you've never said it. And just take note of that. And before I continue and why I'm asking this question and why it's important, take the time to really tune in and reflect and implement. Just, you know, remove any distractions. I know there's so much going on. You might have uh, another, your emails open or a social media, your phone. Like we are doing, we are so used right now to have so much information and so much going on at the same time. Taking care of yourself means to also be present with yourself for the thing that you do in this very moment. So for the next 10, 15 minutes, remove any distractions and give yourself permission to be totally present with yourself and for yourself. Okay, when was the last time? Tina says never, I appreciate that. Leah said yesterday, fantastic. And Leah has been so committed and has been working with me for a while. I love um, what you're doing. 
So, but just, and it, there's no right or wrong here. It doesn't matter if it was yesterday, if it was a year ago, or it just was never. It's about you reflecting and taking an inventory and then to look, wow, what does that actually mean to say I love you to myself? And I give you an example of why I came up with this this morning because it happened to me and I, it happened to me a lot, but because in the meanwhile, it's part of my life and part of who I am and it hasn't always been this way. And if you know my story, you know that I used to hate myself that I was severely depressed and I was extremely unhappy. So for me to say that I love myself is, is really, it has been a long journey. So I was doing the dishes this morning and, <laughs> and because I burned my hand yesterday and my finger is kind of like still a little bit sore, um, I, I wanted to put soap in the pan and I did something kind of stupid and, and I just hit the the soap without putting the pen underneath and the soap was everywhere. My point in this, in that moment, the first, I was like, I was laughing, but I said like, that was something stupid to do. But then I was laughing about it. And then I, because I talked to myself, I mean, we all talk to ourselves, by the way, all the time, if you are aware of it or not, but we are constantly in a dialogue. If it's internally, like without using our voice or out, you know, like, how often do we say, oh, my God, that was so stupid or whatever, or, oh, my God, this and that. Like, we constantly talk to ourselves. I just want to make that very clear um, that everybody does that. It's normal, and even though maybe, I don't know, a few decades ago we would have put into mental hospital for it, it's something totally normal. Therefore, it's also important to see how you talk to yourself, consciously and unconsciously. But my point is, in that moment, I laughed about it, and I had a moment of gratitude and love for myself. And I said out loud, Sonia, you're so funny. I love you. And I just continued. And, but it was a genuine, it was not like, oh, I want to hear from someone or I want to prove it. It was a genuine moment where I appreciated myself. I could appreciate that I have funny moments. And I simply told myself that I love myself for who I am and also for the capacity to love about the things versus judging myself that I would have done in the past. And it's actually more challenging and it takes more courage to admit your greatness, to show and own it, than to stay in self-judgment or in self-hatred. And this relates all to self-care because if you don't love yourself, and when I say self, I mean the being, who you are, not your patterns and all of that. Yeah, you do accept that because it's part of, of, of your experience. But if you don't love who you are, you sabotage taking care of yourself because there's no value. I hope this makes sense. And please let me know if you resonate with this and if I'm landing here. So when I said that and when I said it's easy, it's, it's more challenging to love yourself in society because there's so much involved. It's so easy. Everybody connect, not everybody, but it's easier to connect through judgment and hatred with people than through love and joy. I'll give you an example. Um, if, if I go out and, and say these things and I share these, hey, I love myself. I, I do love myself. Not everybody likes hearing that, or you might get judged, or they might think, oh, what, what does she think about herself? And all of that stuff, right? That comes from a place because it triggers the wounds and the pain from someone else. Because if you don't love yourself and you see someone really happy and joyful and, and, and in love with themselves, that triggers your own pain and therefore, or triggers their pain, and therefore we get judgmental because we don't want to see the pain. But if we go around and complain and share how bad we feel about ourselves, we get compassion, we get understanding, we say, oh yeah, I know exactly, and oh yeah, this is so bad. So I want you to understand that there's such a big force underneath this, that even though you understand maybe on a conscious level that taking care of yourself is crucial and important and necessary for your own well-being and health and also for the people around you, you still most likely won't do it on a regular basis because the patterns and the pressure are too strong. 
let me know if this makes sense and I'm gonna check I still want to see how or when the last time it was that you said you love yourself genuinely real like really from a deep authentic place and Darlene says cannot do the mirror highly <laughs> thing yeah I get that rarely it ever have said it usually a negative comment that I say yeah thank you for sharing that yeah Jennifer is here hi no is here hello Jolene saying it's landing. Good morning. No, my Alyssa, wonderful. Okay, just checking in. And for those who are who joined a little bit late, tune in for a second and let me know when was the last time in your life, if ever, that you genuinely said to yourself, I love you. And again, I don't mean like in, in a fake trying to accomplish way or something. It's like genuinely just because you felt such an appreciation for who you are. When was the last time? And if your answer is never, or, oh gosh, I don't remember, or maybe a few times in my life, then it's time to change that. This is your next step. Because what does it mean to take care of yourself? And not only throughout the holidays when we are more challenged, and many, many of us, I'm actually not, because for me, the holidays are, is, are not a stressful time, but there were times that it was a stressful time for me. So, but that doesn't apply only for this time of the year. It's really in general for your life. And what it means that you, first of all, value yourself and you appreciate yourself, your being, who you are, so much that you take care of yourself because it's just not even um, a consideration not to do it. And sometimes I, I, when I look at us, you know, when, how we live, most people take better care of their car than on themselves. They would not go to the gas station and say, put the crappiest shit that you have into my car, I don't care. And it might run bad, I might break the engine, it might slow down. It won't have that effectiveness anymore. People don't do that. You wouldn't do that. You would not put stuff in your car that's not good for it so that it doesn't run smoothly because your car is important, you want to take care of it, whatever. But isn't it shocking or is there not something out of balance when you take better care of something or someone else than you so just reflect on that for a moment so what it means to take care of yourself is that you learn how to love yourself and to honor yourself and you appreciate yourself so that it's important enough to you that you don't even think about hey am I gonna take time this morning to do something that brings me joy or that is good for my health or good for my body no you don't think about that anymore you just do it because you know it's important to you, okay? So that's one thing. And what's really stopping you in many ways because it's, we totally get it. Yeah, you understand that taking time for yourself is important, but why and how and why don't you actually do it, you know? Are these, maybe these are some questions that you ask yourself and maybe you're not even aware of it, but you're aware that you may be struggling with self-judgment or anxiety or stress or loneliness, sadness, um, you know, so much is going on in our lives day in, day out on a constant level that the most important thing for you to be able to consistently take care of your being, of yourself, is that you have appreciation and love for who you are. And I believe that is the foundation to inner peace and happiness. And then you do, do the work, the inner work that gets you there. And it is not only important for you because a lot of people say, oh, it's so selfish. And when you are in a selfish conversation, it's, an, I'm not, it's actually an I'm not good enough conversation. Because taking care of yourself has nothing to do with, you know, like there's a huge difference being, being narcissistic, and, and just give a shit about people and stop like, like you know that's not who you are 
And I know that's not who you are because if you are watching this and if you are my community and you resonate with what I do, I know that's not who you are. So stop that conversation about, oh, it's selfish or I feel guilty, I shouldn't take care of myself. Yes, you should and you need to because regardless if you have children or if you, if you have children or uh, family, business, whatever it is that you have, you are caring about other people and you have a responsibility. However, if you don't care about yourself and if you don't honor and appreciate you, you will never be able to teach that to anyone because words don't teach. Words are just words. And you know this. And you know this because you could. You could go to the mirror later and there, there are exceptions, obviously. And, and I'm happy for, for all of you that you love yourself so authentically and genuinely. But go to the mirror and just say, hey, I love you. And these are words. It's not through words that you transform and heal. You, you use them, and you know how mindful I am about words. You use them to support your growth and your journey and your healing, but you don't heal through words. And you don't, and you don't influence through words on an energetical level, especially small, like when you have children. If you have children, you, in my opinion, and of course you don't have to agree with me in any way, you have children you it's necessary necessary for you to learn how to honor appreciate and love yourself so that you can trust yourself and you and you have that feeling of worthiness because if you don't have it inside yourself your children will not learn it from you it's not possible because they're all involved in you yeah. does that make sense let me know. Okay, let me see if I have questions. I have a few more minutes here. If you have a specific question or a specific area in your life where this applies to you, let me know. Elia is sharing. I used to say that I look ugly to myself, especially when I see photos of myself when I was a little girl. I hated my hair. I looked like a boy. I, there was a time in my life that I looked like a boy because I had a super short haircut. Oh my God, it was so bad. And one time a boy came to me in the hallway. I was very young, I don't remember, very young. And he thought I was a boy. Oof, I haven't thought about this in decades. So Leah, thank you for sharing that. And uh, yeah, but she's saying also, however, after doing inner work, her perspective has changed, yeah, big time. So Jennifer says, I love myself. Really, <laughs> but I cannot figure out why I'm not making taking care of my body number one priority. I really do love myself, but part is still interesting. That part is still interesting. Yeah, that is a great point, Jennifer, and thank you so much for sharing it. And um, I do totally get it. And what I'm going to say might resonate with you, might not. You take it or you don't. It might plant a seed or not. Um, if there are different layers. And self-love is not an end destination. I love myself, and that doesn't mean that there are layers of not being good enough that get triggered, different layers of connecting deeper to who you really are. So instead, what I would recommend to you or anyone who has that conversation, let go of that convincing yourself that you love yourself and tune into what's my body what does my body mean to me? What does my body, what, what does it mean for me to have a body? What is it that I resist about doing it? Like change your focus a little bit versus, hey, I should uh, take care of my body because I do love myself. You forget about that piece and you tune in because there's always something underlying. It could be a belief, a certain fear, um, because it's obvious that it's not important enough to you. So, and as your body is the vehicle of who you are as the soul expression, I, or what's just coming for me, for you, is also to keep doing the work to connect upwards. That's actually what's missing for you, Jennifer. I just got that. It's, it's really the, the love for yourself, but the love that comes from a higher place of who you are being. And when you infuse that into your life and into your body, you will be more likely actually making that a number one priority. I hope this helps. 
Tina is saying she's getting closer, yes. Tamira, hi Tamira. Lately I feel I'm really busy taking care of my daughter, family and work and feels like I don't have time to take care of myself because I'm exhausted right now from constant go, go, go. Trying to find balance to have me time to get ready and self-care. That's not a question, but thank you so much for sharing and I'm 100% sure that so many people here right now can relate to that. Who can relate to what Tamira just shared? I'm really busy taking care of daughter, family work, and it feels like I don't have time because I'm so exhausted and I'm on this constant go, go, go. Who can relate? Jennifer, I'm happy that, okay, perfect, happy that that helped. Who can relate to that? So, and even though you didn't ask a question, I'm gonna talk into that just for a moment and thank you so much for sharing. It's exactly what I just said. And you get to make a decision to change that. No one else will for you. Not your daughter, not your family, not your work. It's your responsibility and you get to do that and you can. Number two, re erase the words, I have no time. I don't have time. I don't have time is not true. Number one, it's not true. You have 24 hours like everyone else, you're just choosing not to take it for you. So remove I don't have, and you uh, substitute it with I choose because you make a choice. And when you acknowledge your choice, this is always empowering, even though it's maybe against what you wanted to do. But if you say, I choose not to take the time for myself because I choose to take care of others first. Underneath, what we are telling ourselves is everybody else is more important than me. So, and it's not about not taking care of them. It's about finding a balance. And you can and you must if you want to keep inner peace and health and also create it for others. Because if you don't do that, you teach your daughter not to do it unconsciously, energetically. She's not going to grow up learning, hey, my mom is important enough that she sets a boundary and takes care of herself. So that means I'm going to do that too. I hope this makes sense and it's helpful. And if you have follow-up questions, and also when you're on the replay, ask questions. Leave them here. I will get back, if not today, on Monday. Because weekends, I'm taking care of myself. <laughs> okay. Um, I have two more minutes, and then I have to jump off because I have an interview. So I'm extending just because you guys are actually commenting. Everyone taking care of me does. Everyone taking care of me does. I'm not sure, Paige, what you mean. So if you want to clarify that for me. And Leah says she can totally resonate with Tamira. Yeah, so helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome, Tamira. I'm very, help I'm very happy you asked that question because it helps others too. It helps others when you ask a question. So don't be shy. Don't think that your question is not important or that it's stupid or you don't want to take my time and all of that. That conversation has to let that go for this year. That conversation is over. Your question is important, it's valuable, and it helps others. Okay, helpful, 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 fantastic. Thank you so much for being here today. If this was valuable, click the share button, share it with someone. Care about yourself and about someone else, and come back on Monday. Most likely, because I keep changing the things that I do because I'm so soul infused, I come up with what I think is best in the moment. Most likely though, I will talk about food and emotional eating and all of that on Monday because I've got so many comments and requests and messages about that they struggle a lot. A lot of people struggle with the, the whole eating thing around Christmas and how to actually avoid that and to be more mindful so that you don't <laughs> have to go on a diet on January that we don't do no New Year's resolutions to make this end of the year really the best of the year. And on Monday I might have a, have a little bit more time so I can go deeper into that. Have a fantastic weekend. No soul infused holidays, Saturday and Sunday and I will be back Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Set a reminder on your phone and I will see you there. Much love.